He is so worthy. What a great time in praise and worship this morning, and even prayer before praise and worship. We had such a marvelous time. I want to welcome online people. I want to welcome all you ladies that have come this morning and um, to hear the word and to pray for our community and our church this morning. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth, Father God. We thank you for the hearts that it's going to change, Father God, and bring your glory in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm Vicki Perry, one of the deacons here, and I'm sending in for Pastor Cecilia. She is on vacation. Yes, she is. Yes, she is on vacation, and she's going to have a restful time with her husband and her family. Well, the last time when I was here, I, um, I stood here, and it was probably about three or four weeks ago, and I spoke on grace. And I can't get away from the grace, especially with the, the, um, the risen Lord on Easter yesterday, or the day before, rather. I spoke on, I, that grace just has stuck in my heart. But it says, how grace is a free, unmerited favor of God as manifested in salvation of sinners and bestowing of the blessings of God upon us. Because it's just not for salvation. Grace is how we live. Grace is who we are and what he is in us. So how do we express grace? Now the Greek, unmerit favor, grace is an act of giving someone a blessing or favor that did not deserve it. Did we deserve what we got from Jesus when he went to the cross? No. He went in our place, and he stood in our place and took everything that we should have had and did for our body. He took it upon his. Why did he do that? Because he loved us so much. He loved us and wanted to commune and have relationship with us once again. It also is to provide with something freely or naturally given. He gave it freely. He didn't, there was no strings attached to our salvation of that grace. He gave it without any hesitation. We didn't have to, deser- we didn't have to earn it, and we didn't deserve it. Why did Jesus give us grace? I went to Genesis um, chapter 2 of Adam and Eve when he started. I'm going to just read a little bit of the blurb here of verses 7 and 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I'm going to skip to verse 15 because this is where I'm going with this. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden because he has already made the man. And he put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. He put him there to tend it and to keep it. So that means there was work that, the, that Adam had to do in that garden and to keep it up to the standards that God wanted him to keep it up. Because in my mind, when I've read it years ago, is, oh, the garden is perfect, which it was, but there were still things for him to do. Of every tree of the garden you may eat, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, but in that day that you eat it, you will surely die. And that's, and that's the story we really know. When he made Eve, they did. They ate of the tree of good and of knowledge um, of good and evil and they ate of that tree and that tree or when they ate of that tree they broke relationship with Jesus they broke relationship with Jesus so God in the fall of Adam and Eve there was sin brought into the world and that sin got grew heavier and heavier and heavier But God had a plan of restoration for the people. It was that grace that he sent his son to die for us and take all of our need, all of, on all of our sin nature. What love the father had for us. What love. I can't imagine that love, that grace, that love, because grace is love. 
And, and, and I just can't imagine how much the Father has loved us. And he continues to love us in our state that we're in right now. Because we go from glory to glory to glory. It, it, it's a progression and to get to, to that holiness and to that holies of holies and to the, into his throne room. We also talked about that grace that gives us new life to walk in and come into relationship with, once again, as I had said, with our Father. It's through grace that God works effect, effective change in our hearts and our lives. It's that grace. He graces us because I know I stumble all the time. You know, I said, okay, Lord, I missed it today. I missed it yesterday. I missed it the day before. But it's by grace now that I can come back to him and say, I missed it. Forgive me, Lord. And let's go on. And what do you have for me today? Because I want to walk in your glory. I want to walk in your holiness more and more than we do. So what are some of the ways that God's grace as an intercessor so that that, that he gives us um, that we can move fruit freely in prayer and in the spirit. Some of the ways that God gives us that grace to move. One, by grace we can come before him in his throne room and sit and talk with him no matter what our, what's on our minds. Jeremiah 33, <clears throat> verse 1 and 3, he tells us that he has a plan. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the courts of the prison, saying, Thus says the Lord who made it, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. That's the second one is he's going to show us great and mighty things. What did he show Moses? He showed Moses so many miracles and, and miraculous signs to get the people to come from Egypt into the promised land. That's where God has taken us, from that Egypt, and take more of the Egypt out of us so we can come more into yeah. his promised land. So we can sit there at his table, like David, he sat at his table and dined with him and had fellowship with him. But David, he had a strategy and a plan that God had instilled into him how he was going to do war and take back the land that belonged to the Lord. So in intercession, we take back the land. Yeah. We pray. Yeah. We seek God. We can sit at his table and say, God, I need to know your plan, your strategies for where you want me to take these prayers and, and to do what you want me to do with these prayers. And then in the prayers, as we continuously sit before him, he will show us the great things. Great and mighty things. He'll show us the miraculous. He'll show us healings. He'll show us people that we need to pray for to bring us from one place to the next place that he has in them. To bring forth the fruits that he wants out of them. Fruits that he wants us to pray for those that... So he says, therefore, come boldly into my throne room. Boldly means we have favor. We have grace to come boldly into that throne room and, to, and, to, and say to him, Lord, I need you to show me this. I need, I need you to help me go into that spiritual realm, stir it up, stir it up, and send forth this to send it to. By grace, we can obtain and find grace to help in time of needs. Jesus gives us direction where, where and how to pray. Not only direction, I've had him give me provision for the people that, that I've been praying for. They have had a, a want or a need or whatever they have needed. They, he has given it to me to give it to them. And we need to be obedient to hear what the voices of the Lord is saying to us so we know what to give. And it may be the last nickel you have in your pocket, but God says, give it, and I will give it back to you a hundredfold. Yes, yes. God heard the cry of the Israelites in the wilderness. He commanded Moses to go. As intercessors, we just don't sit in our seats and in 
bedrooms, and sometimes that's exactly, or in our dens or whatever, to pray. He's told us to go. As we go to the movies, as we go to the grocery store, as we go here, we're to open our mouth and proclaim yes. the voice of the Lord. Yes. yes. And, and, and this is what I wanted to bring out about Moses. Moses said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to take those people from here to here. But God has made us worthy by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, we are worthy to take and do as he's exploited us and put into us to do and come forth. And so, um, but Moses had the promises of God also. He had the promise of God because when he went to God and said, God, I can't talk very well. I can't do all this very well. Aaron stepped up and helped him. There's times that I can't do what I felt that the Lord has told me to do, and I will seek somebody else's help. And I will say, I need this help, or I need some prayer. Help me to break through the strongholds in this area so we can go forth in this area. Our church wants to move forward. We're a hub. We're a light, a beacon of light here in this community. But we have to pull down the stronghold in the community for this light to penetrate to go where it needs to go. So we have the promises of God knowing that God will fulfill everything that we need. But God also gave Moses the authority. He gave us the authority to duel that sword or to speak that word in authority and know that it, when we proclaim it, it shall come to pass. So we know all the, the story of Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. Many had to be put into place before they left Egypt. They just, you know, a long time ago when I used to hear the story, and I'm talking years ago, and I won't tell you years ago, but I used to think, oh, they just got up and they all just went. No, 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 no. No, they had, to, they had to assemble them and give them what the plan was that God had given them to take them out of Egypt. But what I like the best, too, in this story is there were so many miracles that Moses performed through God in the Old Testament, and that Holy Spirit was upon him to perform them. I mean, how many of us can have a rod that turns into a snake? The intercessors, we have the power and authority through Jesus Christ. If he says, throw that rod down, you throw it down, and it's going to turn into that snake and devour everything it needs to devour in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, there was many miracles that took place. They never wanted anything for anything. Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, after all of the plagues that were done and, and, and the plagues that they had and went through, they still had more to go through in the wilderness. But God, shoes didn't wear out. Food didn't diminish. There was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that Moses had to take care of. Through all of us intercessors and even in the corporate church, there's hundreds of us that we pray for the salvation of the Lord to be seen. So never dismiss, dismiss how important you are to Jesus Christ in the body of Christ. I want to kind of say this too that the Lord had given to me. He says, no different are the people today than the people of Egypt as a, of the wilderness. You know what? It's really hard to leave the old and to walk in the new. What does that look like? They don't know. They didn't know what it looked like, and neither do we know what it looks like. And neither. When I first came to the Lord, and I said, and they told me I was a new creature. I said, What does that mean to me? I didn't know what that meant to me. You know, I got saved in a in a vision. So born again to me didn't mean anything. All I know is I had Jesus, and nobody was going to take Jesus away from this little Lutheran girl. <laughs> nobody was going to take Jesus away from me. But I had so many ladies in my life. Once I jumped into the Beth Church, I had some lovely ladies in my life that told me, Vicki, you stay here where it's safe. It's not safe here anymore because the enemy was just running all over me here. She said, you have to start moving forward in the things of God and 
in the word and getting the word down into your heart and spending time before the Lord and knowing that this is where the Lord was taking you. Because I was a single mom with three young, three young men, really, teenagers in my household when I got saved. And it was hard. It was very hard. But it was so easy because I was so familiar with this. I said, no, I don't want to leave that. I don't want to, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to leave that to go to here. I don't know what this holds for me. But once I stepped a foot over, because these ladies just kept on giving me a little nudges and little pushes, spent with the Lord, the Lord was showing me, yes, you can do this. And he was healing my heart. Because, see, when you have a wounded heart, and a lot of these Israelites, they had wounded hearts. They had wounded hearts. And the people that we're going to be praying for, a lot of them have wounded hearts, wounded minds, wounded bodies. We need to know that it's very difficult for them to leave what is comfortable and to go forth in the things of God. But once I stepped out in them and I knew, oh, I feel so much better when I left sexual sin, profanity, pornography, all of that, when I started leaving all of that there and started going forth in the things of God and knowing that he was going to bless me, I didn't have enough money when I left all this. I had nothing. God even provi provided money. He pays electric bills for me. When I said, yes, God, yes, I will move, he changed my clothing. He changed my verbiage in my mouth. He changed it all, and it was scary. And it was scary to my three sons. They said, what do you do with my mom, you know? But I had to trust. I had no other way to do it but trust in him because I needed to go forward. I didn't have any, I couldn't go there anymore because I didn't like it anymore. And so in it all is God made a way just like he did the Israelites. Now, now that's a little of a small glimpse of the Old Testament. And I didn't even grasp. Uh, scratch the surface of it. But I want to move on to the New Testament of that grace. Jesus was born the Messiah. When he was born, God, or God gave us Jesus as the Messiah, the promise of, of redemption in the New Testament. John the Baptist came to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. Jesus moved about his life doing great and mighty miracles and healings. In John 4, 10, Jesus used the word of knowledge. And I'm going to go there because I want to read that. i got to find it. <clears throat> I just love John. John is my, one of my favorite books. And when I come across somebody that really needs to know where to go to read, I tell them, go to the book of John. It's the love chapter. It's a, it, Jesus just takes you and, and just mushes you and, and just brings you right to, you know, you smell it in his arms, you know. And, and I said, that's where I like to go with it. So in um, John 4, 10 through 19, <clears throat> Jesus answers and says to her, now he's talking um, to the woman at the well, the Samaritan, Samaritan woman, and, um, and you know that the Samaria, Samaritan women or men didn't have anything to do with the Jews. Jesus answers and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who, and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. I thought, oh my goodness, here he is once again in the New Testament because now he's grown up. He's not a baby anymore. He's not in that manger anymore. He is a man doing the miracles that God has sent him to do to show them the pathway back to the Father, back to the Garden of Eden where he can have fellowship once again for, with us. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father, Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered her and said to her, whoever drinks of the water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst, but the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Do you hear that, ladies? And online, a water that you'll never thirst again. 
that is one of the miracles here that, that I wanted to use, that Jesus also knew he had five husbands. So he worked in the word, a word of knowledge. So hold on to some of these things. John the Baptist, he gave the gospel. Jesus was born the Messiah, and Jesus moved about his life with doing great and mighty things. Then we come to a place where Jesus heals the dead. Oh, my gosh. He's going to heal the dead? Not our Jesus. Does he have enough power and authority to do that? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He does in all his glory. He raises up Lazarus. Okay, then we as intercessors, we can send our words because Jesus sent his word to heal the um, Caesarean's, um, may, I think it was a servant in his house. So as he went and he believed, he went and he was healed. But Jesus says, don't worry, he's not dead. Because when we intercede, we can send our word. We can send the word and the atmosphere and the spiritual realm. We can send that word and that person, we can expect that person to be healed by the name of Jesus. Now we come to one, two. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Not, he said, just with the word, he, he fed the people. And there was abundance afterwards. He will take care of each and every one of our needs as we intercede for the people that we, he's put on our hearts and we're obedient to what we need to do by the word of God. He takes care of the provisions for us too, not just for the people we're praying for, for us also. That promise is yea and amen are for us also. <clears throat> then he gives us the Holy Spirit in Acts. He gives us authority and power to walk in the same anointing to do the great and mighty exploits that he did. I'm going to tie this all together, girls. I've not left it. This is where I'm going to go with this. Cecilia talked about the legacy that we left, that we leave as we, you know, our families will see once we're gone, or even before we're gone, they'll see part of our legacy. These are the legacy. Some of the things that I have read to you and said to you is the legacy that Jesus Christ left for us to do and to pick up because you know what? We pick up his mantle. Our children, our great-grandchildren, our children beyond that are going to pick up our mantles and have the fruit of our prayers that they will go forth and then do the exploits that we have already done and will do and have already done. So, in the fall, well, wait a minute here. I got the wrong page here. An example. All these signs and wonders, miracles and healings that Jesus did, we shall see and do as intercessors, as I just said. We stand in the gap and are obedient to what the Holy Spirit says to do in each situation, and he puts a cross our, he puts it across our pathway. Jesus will grace us in every situation that we come about. What a legacy that Jesus leaves us. Who is this King of glory? O oh, precious Jesus, King of glory. We say, have your way, O oh, King of glory. So let's get ready for communion. <clears throat> And online, people, um, to have communion, uh, if you don't have a wafer and a wine, go get what you have in your house. There's no need for you not to have communion. We love to have, have communion with you. And um, sometimes I just have crackers. Sometimes I have water. It doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> or I see from the Lord, which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is for you. 
this do in remembrance of me. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come to your dine and dine with you at your table, Father God, and drink with you, almighty Jesus. And so in the same manner, he also took the cup and saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. We thank you, Jesus, for the cup. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your mercy, but most of all, Father God, we thank you for your grace, Father yes. God. We thank you that you took on all of our nature and gave us your nature, Father God. In the name of Jesus, take and drink. Amen and amen and amen. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father, that we are ready. We're setting our feet, Father God, to go forth in the things and the exploits that you have called us to go in to even deeper, deeper revelation with you. Deeper, Father God, to the spiritual things that you've called us to come to, into, yeah. Father God. As intercessors, he wants us to come higher. He wants us to come higher into the and do the exploits that he's called us to do. So, uh, Father, I bless these people. I bless you online. I bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you, his grace shine upon you. And give you in the name of Jesus. Amen.